In this video, we'll talk about Clostridium perfringens. This is a rod-shaped bacteria of the genus Clostridium. They are gram-positive, anaerobic, spore-forming, pathogenic bacterium. Quite a lot of terms. In this video, we'll look at all these aspects of Clostridium perfringens and look at from the clinical point of view. CDC estimates that this bacteria can cause roughly 1 million illnesses in United States every year. And this particular bacteria is a cause of food poisoning. Other than that, Clostridium perfringens is well known to cause gas gangrene. Gas gangrene is a notorious pathological symptom. Let's talk about it in details. But what makes Clostridium perfringens very dangerous is the spore forming ability. It can form endospores which are resistant to extreme conditions of starvation, acidity, temperature or desiccation. Simply they can survive the harsh environment. Now gas gangrene is a bacterial disease caused by Clostridium perfringens and it's a deadly disease if untreated. The injured tissue produces foul smelling gas and that's why the name is gas gangrene. So in this case, the symptoms are swelling, necrosis of that local region, numbness on the affected region, fever, skin gets decolorized. There is foul smelling discharge from the lesion in the skin and then that is why the name was uh, gas gangrene. Ultimately, there are distinctive black bubble lesions on the skin around the affected area. Now, this gas gangrene leads to clostridial myonecrosis. Myonecrosis means necrosis of the muscle tissues and it, it, and it is due to the exotoxins produced by this particular bacteria. It leads to damage in the muscle tissue and this is very specific to muscle tissue itself. Now this bacteria is an opportunistic pathogen in general. That means they can enter the body through the uh, wherever there is a breakage in the skin. Now gangrenous infection was soil borne because this particular bacteria was found in the soil and this was most common during uh, the second world war and it is present in combat soldiers. Now spores of Clostridium perfringens can germinate in open wounds and can produce cytotoxic substances and the cytotoxic substance include alpha toxin and theta toxin. The alpha toxin is associated with hemolysis that means rupturing the red blood cells and the theta toxin can damage the blood vessel wall that leads to restriction in blood flow. Now when there is less amount of blood flow in the nearby tissue there are cascades of event that can happen. First of all, there could be further uh, restrictions in the blood flow in the region. Then as there is a restriction in blood flow, other cells such as neutrophil, basophil and these immune cells cannot come to the target region and combat this kind of pathogens. That means they are holding the immune system to invade these region. Now the hemolytic activity of alpha toxin is produced in an anaerobic environment which is essential for the proliferation of this bacteria. So anyway they grow in soil and that is why they need an anaerobic environment. Oxygen is actually harmful for them, they won't grow in oxygen. Unlike any other anaerobic infection, the discharge of these infection is not at all purulent. That means pus filled discharge is not found. Instead, the discharge is sweetly portrayed and it's like a, a kind of like a faint yellowish fluid and this is very characteristic to gas gangrene. The toxins can be carried from one region of the body to the other region of the body and this could have a long range effect. For example, these toxins can go to the kidney which can cause renal problems. It can also cause shock, renal failure, intravascular hemolysis and many other symptoms. In short, if this particular toxin spreads over the body, it might have several systemic effects. 
Now, as we have mentioned before, Clostridium perfringens and some strain of these Clostridium perfringens can cause food poisoning and that's a severe form of food poisoning. As these are like spore forming bacteria, they can even stay in the cooked food. CDC estimates over 1 million food poisoning cases in United States alone. So when this specimen is obtained from any patient, generally you can do the gram staining, they would turn out to be gram positive and they are rods. So they can be easily observed under the microscope. Alternatively, when cultured anaerobically on blood agar, C. perfringens produces a unique beta hemolysis pattern. Anyway, this infection is a bacterial infection, so it is treatable. If this infection has not spread that much, then doctor would prescribe proper medications, antibiotics, which can combat this infection. But in case of extreme situation, there could be amputation of specific digits, for example, amputation of a portion of the leg. Sometimes there is an exposure to hypo hyperbaric oxygen therapy. That means these pathogens are not at all well versed with oxygen. Actually, oxygen is harmful for them. They are anaerobic, right? That is why in order to make these bacteria uncomfortable, hyperbaric oxygen treatment is done. High doses of penicillin and doxycycline should be administered to kill these pathogens. That pretty much summarizes this video. We looked at what is the infective potential of C. perfringens. We looked that gas gangrene can be caused by C. perfringens. We elaborated on the pathophysiology and looked at that toxins that can be uh, causing the harmful effects in gas gangrene. Lastly, we looked at the lab diagnosis of C. perfringens. In order to get more notes and flashcards, you can follow me on Facebook or Instagram. You can download all of these flashcards, which are super informative, useful for your preparation. All the links are provided in the description. You can support my channel by clicking on the super thanks option present in the bottom right corner of each video. You can contribute using Paytm, PayPal, UPI or internet banking. So thanks for watching all my social media links and social media links for Nerdmedic channel is pinned in the description box. You can connect to us at any point of time. Feel free to connect and please comment in the video whether you are liking it or not. See you in the next video.